At the beginning of every shift, gases and regulators need to be checked. When doing this, check that the Bodox seal, which you can see here, has no wear and tear. If necessary, replace the seal to prevent oxygen from leaking from the cylinder. To place the regulator on the cylinder, place it over the top and hand tighten. Once the regulator is on, you can open the bottle. You can see how much oxygen is in the cylinder by checking the gauge and check the flow rates by turning the flow rate meter. To flush the oxygen regulator, remove from the cylinder and open the flow rate meter to remove any oxygen stored in the regulator. There are five devices commonly used for oxygen delivery. The first, nasal prongs, come with attached oxygen tubing. To use these, simply attach the tubing directly to the cylinder. Nasal prongs deliver 28% oxygen at a rate of 1 to 4 litres per minute. The next device is the simple or Hudson mask. This device delivers 60% oxygen at a rate of 6 to 8 litres per minute. The simple mask needs to be attached to a separate piece of tubing attached to the cylinder in order to work. The third device is the nebulizer mask. This is used for the delivery of liquid medicines. The nebulizer mask delivers 60% oxygen at a rate of 8 litres per minute. To attach the nebulizer mask, again, attach with a separate piece of oxygen tubing at the bottom. The fourth device used for oxygen delivery is the non-rebreather or reservoir mask. This mask delivers 90% oxygen at a rate of 10 to 15 litres per minute. Once attached to the oxygen cylinder, wait for the reservoir bag to fill up. This allows for delivery of high concentration oxygen. Final device used for oxygen delivery is the bag valve mask. This is used for manual ventilation of a patient. The bag valve mask delivers 98 to 100% oxygen at 15 litres per minute. To administer oxygen to a patient using a simple mask, attach the mask to the oxygen cylinder using a piece of oxygen tubing. Set your cylinder to 6 litres per minute and lie the cylinder down to prevent injury to you or the patient. Explain to the patient what you'd like to do and obtain consent. Mary, if it's alright with you, I'd like to give you some oxygen through this mask. That means I'm going to place it over the back of your head and you're going to need to breathe normally. Is that okay with you? Yes. Great. So I'm going to pop the mask over your face. Before manual ventilation of a patient, you need to check that your bag valve mask and reservoir are leak free. To check the bag, place your hand over the end and try and deflate. If no air escapes, then that means that the bag is leak free. To check the reservoir, place it over the end and inflate. When it's inflated, if no air escapes, that means your reservoir is leak free. Place on the end and put a mask. Before ventilation, you need to insert an airway into your patient. I'm going to insert an OPA using the technique that I'll demonstrate shortly. You need to turn on the oxygen to 15 litres and fill up the reservoir. To place the mask on the patient's face, roll the end of the mask over the patient's nose, down towards the chin. I'm going to hold the bag mask with the CE grip ensuring that I'm keeping the airway open and I'm obtaining a tight seal. I'm going to ventilate the patient with a quarter to a third of the bag every eight seconds. It's helpful to count during this time to prevent overventilating the patient. Chest rise. Chest rise. Whilst ventilating a patient, it's important to periodically check for gastric inflation as this means you're overventilating your patient and air is entering the stomach. If you're having difficulty ventilating your patient, then the mnemonic MINES can be used. This stands for obtaining a good mask seal, obesity or obstruction, aged patients, patients with no teeth and patients with stiff lungs such as asthma patients who need a reduced ventilation rate of 6 to 8 ventilations per minute. Because my patient has a GCS below 8 and is not alert to pain on the verbal response scale, I'm going to insert an OPA to manage his airway. Before I do this, I'm going to open the airway and check for any obstructions. Once I'm happy that the airway is clear, I'm going to measure the OPA from the corner of the mouth to the back of the mandible. To insert an OPA, insert halfway with the tip facing the top of the mouth and 
then rotate 180 degrees and insert the rest of the way. Some contraindications when using an OPA are soft tissue damage, worsening airway obstruction, induced vomiting, and there's a risk of pushing the tongue backwards, further obstructing the airway. In a patient with trismus, oral trauma, or an increased GCS, it is indicated to use a nasal pharyngeal airway when assisting ventilations. To measure the NPA, measure it between a nostril and the back of the mandible. Before inserting the NPA, open the patient's airway and check for any obstructions. It's important to lubricate the NPA with a water-based lubricant before inserting. Insert the NPA 90 degrees to the patient's face, inserting into the largest nostril. If any obstructions are met, rotate 180 degrees and insert the rest of the way. Insert the NPA until the flange sits on the nostril. Complications of NPA use are bleeding and nasal polyps. If there is a suspected basal skull fracture, then the use of an NPA is contraindicated. To perform a self-test using a suction unit, simply to press the test button and turn the machine on. A clue the end of the suction and wait for the machine to stop. You can then cycle through the different se suction settings with the test button. If any of these lights aren't green, then the suction unit is not functioning correctly. Some complications that can arise when suctioning a patient include induced bradycardia and induced vomiting, hypoxia, aspiration, and soft tissue damage. If possible, suctioning should be carried out when a patient is laying on their side. However, there are some situations, such as during a cardiac arrest, when other manoeuvres take precedent. During this time, it is possible to suction with the patient lay supine. First, open the patient's airway. It's important that when you suction, you only insert the catheter as far as you can see. Suction in a circular motion for less than 10 seconds, only suctioning when withdrawing the catheter. When in a moving vehicle, it's important that you don't use a rigid catheter, as this can cause soft tissue damage to the patient. Each suction unit comes with a range of soft catheters for use during this time. At the beginning of every shift, the defibrillator needs to be in good working order with the batteries fully charged. The defibrillator in this vehicle is the Philips Heartstart MRX, and I'm going to demonstrate its use. To check the batteries, simply remove from the back and check the charge status by pressing the button on the top. To replace the battery, simply push straight in the back. To change the paper roll, open the drawer at the front and pull it straight out. Get a new roll and insert it with, with the printed side facing in. To perform a test of fibrillation, turn the therapy dial towards 50 joules and attach the test load. Follow the instructions on the defibrillator, press charge and shock. That delivers the, the shock to the test charge. To disarm the shock, simply charge the defibrillator and press the disarm button at the bottom. To run an operational check on the Philips Heartstart MRX, simply attach a test load and put the defibrillator into monitor mode. You can then press menu at the bottom, scroll down to other, operational check, and then select run operational check. Great, the defibrillator has passed. The MRX has various diagnostic equipment attached, including leads to perform both a 3 and 12 lead ECG. These are commonly found in pockets on opposite ends of the defibrillator. In the left hand pocket you will also find an oxygen saturation probe. Your vehicle or defibrillator may also have a pediatric saturation probe. The saturation probe in this vehicle is found in the drawer underneath the defibrillator. The defibrillator also has blood pressure cuffs of various sizes. And in this pocket, you will find a bag containing 
GTN spray, aspirin, and a disposable razor. In the right hand pocket of the MRX, you will find a spare roll of defibrillator paper, electrodes for performing ECGs, an SPO2 meter, spare defibrillator pads, more leads for doing ECGs. <laughs> And a puck for use when doing CPR. This gives live feedback on CPR quality during a resuscitation. After each use of the defibrillator, it's important to clean all equipment that came into contact with the patient. This includes blood pressure cuffs, O2 saturation probes and ECG leads. When the monitor is in use, it's possible to change between the leads viewed by pressing the lead view button here. You can change between 1, 2, 3 and the pads. You can also print the rhythms at any time with the print start and stop button found just above the printer here. Hello ambulance, patients are down, staying safe. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Did you see what happened? No, I'm sorry, I just saw them, found them on the road. Okie dokie, alright, thank you for that. Set, deliver between 8 and between 9 and 30. Chips right. Chips right from the vehicle pressures, please. Two, two, three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two. 